I would like to take today's video in a little bit of a different direction. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the map, of course. What I was attempting to illustrate here using the idea of perhaps there being prison breaks across the country, in a shit it's the fan situation, the idea of being mobile. The idea of, if you have to, all of the preps that you have made, can you get them in some kind of a vehicle and get the hell out of Dodge if you need to? Now, the colors of the map, that was attempting to illustrate after everything gets put back together again. I wish I could find a version of this map where I could take off all the lines and just show the colored regions. Areas that could possibly in some type of a new future, stand up as their own nation-states. And I don't think it would be lost on anybody that, you know, Florida, Texas, and California might lead the way in the ability to do that just because of the resources. But what I would like to do today differently than what we've done in the past is talk about water. Now, I know it seems like a simple thing, storing water, getting bottled water, water filters, life straws, all that kind of stuff. But in the very first scene of Star Wars, and I know a lot of people already know what they're looking at in the background here, but for those of you who didn't, the very first, way back in the 70s, in the first scene, literally right off the bat, right after uh, um, the droids crash, Luke Skywalker is working on his Uncle Owen's moisture farm. They have these things that pull water right out of the air. We have that technology today. Now, a lot of people know that the ones that uh, are commercially available are a couple thousand dollars. But in a pinch, in a bind, this is basically the same technology, crude but usable. If you gave me a choice between having the ability to generate two or 300 watts with a power inverter or a generator of some type and drinking this, maybe even using a life straw in a concert with it, I think this would be a very uh, useful tool. Now, I know the questions out there. EMP, uh, something happens like that, mass loss of power grid, how are you going to deal with the situation? I'm going to solve that for you today. I have found a channel on YouTube, and I don't normally recommend other channels on YouTube just, YouTube, just because sometimes things get misconstrued. This one is the real deal. This guy's name is Will Prouse, RV Living and Off-Grid Solar. There are a lot of preppers out there that talk theoretical. This guy has actually done it. Living on his own, living in his car, living a nomadic lifestyle, living off-grid. The mistakes he's reviewed, the successes, everything, he shows the whole thing. And I was ready to go buy one of those Gold Zero um, Yeti solar generators. Generators that work off solar panels, and you can buy one now that's will generate 1500 watts easily enough to power even a professional level um, water distiller, a water unit that pulls moisture out of the air. But I saw this real quick and was just decided, you know what, I'm going to do due diligence, I'm going to look at all the information I can possibly get. And this guy breaks it down perfectly that this Kodiak from Energy is really your very best bet for the money. He even created this wonderful chart showing all the major solar generators. I'll link all this for you, of course. Um, go to this guy's channel, like, share, subscribe. This guy is serious. He knows exactly what he's talking about because he's doing it. He's literally walking through the steps of what would happen if you would have to be mobile. You would have to be on the move or you would be without any type of other power source. And he explains in each each one of these, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's got nine of them, it looks like, listed here. And he goes through the breakdown of everything you would need to know of each one and why the Kodiak is the best bet. And he's right. I've done my own independent research on it. And 
he's totally right about all of this. Now, as far as the question of, well, gosh, what happens if everything gets zapped? He has a store that he sells Faraday bags. And they're all the way down here at the bottom, and I'll link this to three different sizes, large, medium, and small. If you actually buy the generator from him, he will include a Faraday bag with it. And he's got all sorts of package deals going on. Um, I'm not, I don't have any financial interest with this guy. I have literally just watched the videos. That's it. Um, but if you couple the idea of generating electricity through solar panels with the idea of pulling water out of the air, you have a survival solution that would give you an incredible edge. Now, there's a lot of companies out here that do this, and sometimes it's super duper duper expensive. Um, this one's $1,800. This would be something you would have to go in with as a group. If you had a survival group, four or five of you, this thing could create enough water on a daily basis, literally indefinitely, to provide you with water. Something like this. You know, I'm not sure how long the water would be good, but 30 pint, you know, in a bind, have it stored in a Faraday bag, have your solar generator stored in a Faraday bag, and you could, at the very least, be able to generate some type of water out of the atmosphere, especially if you live in the south, where it's always humid, it wouldn't be a problem. And when the power grid is up, if you have the ability to, you know, if you have water that you're buying and drinking, and then you have the empty bottles and you have one of these, you could refill as you go for survival water. Now, I know everybody's going to say, well, there's the cost of the filters and cost of that, as opposed to a life straw or as opposed to going out and getting from lakes and boiling. I think this is a much better option. I don't think a lot of people think of having a dehumidifier you know, just as a possible emergency water source. So, as far as electrical generation, um, shit hits the fan. I would like to, I have a three-stage solution personally. The first stage I have, of course, I have a standard 2000 Honda. This is the exact one I have. Why do I have it? It's quiet. Honda is very reliable. It's incredibly efficient. Um, it's very, this is a, the quietest generator out there. Um, does it solve all problems? No. But it does solve one of being portable. I can pick this thing up, carry it, put it anywhere I want to. Um, and I don't have to worry about it breaking down. Before anyone says anything about the, uh, the dual fuel one that runs off the uh, LP gas thing. I would stay away from that. I've heard some things about that. Uh, they're great. They're fantastic. As soon as you get them, you think, oh, this is wonderful. I don't have to store gasoline. I don't have to carry gasoline. But apparently there's some issue with the carburation after a while that the uh, use of LP um, gums it up. Just, you know, what I've heard. I also have one of these. Now, this is the big Super Duty 5,000-watt run-off-the-truck power inverter. If I really absolutely positively had to run an air conditioner, I had to run something that was um, required this type of energy, I have this. And it's just, uh, you can get things to shield your vehicle, even the Faraday bags. You know, you can get that type of uh, mesh. It's available on Amazon. You can line the inside of your truck hood with it, or your car hood, or whatever, your vehicle hood, um, to protect your computer's electronics. Your computer's electronics. Your vehicle's computer electronics, I meant to say. So my three-stage solution, of course, is the generator, this inverter, and then the Kodiak with the Faraday bag. 
So having the ability to generate from a vehicle on the move, generate standalone with gasoline, and generate right from solar panels. This guy sells a kit. Um, let's see if I can find it. Now, it's not a cheap kit, don't get me wrong, but it has enough panels that you can charge up that generator in two hours and 600 watts. And you can basically be generating water nonstop. Clean water. And honestly, in a situation like that, I hate to say it, but you know, if you're talking about being uh, barter friendly, and you're the guy that has this nonstop supply of fresh, clean water, you're going to be a pretty popular guy. You know, your group is going to be one that's sought out, probably by both, you know, good and bad. But any edge you can have. I wouldn't recommend the idea of trying to take gasoline, put it into a generator, and then plugging the water purifier into the gas generator because then you're just basically turning gasoline into water. And that's not a great idea as far as the energy use goes. But the solar generator, when you can turn sunlight into water, that's the way to go. The other two are just backup units. So just wanted to uh, show you this. Um, and like I said, I'll link all this. This guy, Will Prouse, absolutely breaks all of this down perfectly so much better than I could um, he's very knowledgeable and he has videos that talk about all sorts of different aspects of survival um, for a kid his age and I and I don't mean that in any kind of a pejorative way at all um, he's got his shit together he really does he absolutely knows what he's talking about um, you know the good the bad the ugly all of it but I just wanted to cover this today, and I wanted to, um, some people have asked about, what was it? There was the generator, the inverter, and, oh, the food supplement bar that I had recommended, Zone Perfect. The reason I recommend this, food is going to be one of those things that you're going to have to think about differently in a survival situation especially with water being at a premium. Cooking things where you have to add water to them, this dehydrated, reconstituted crap. A, it's terrible for your health. B, it is a waste of water. And C, washing dishes, creating a fire to cook it. All of this, these extra steps that don't need to be can be completely got done away with by having something like this. Why this particular one? Well, the co the cookie dough flavor one is it doesn't melt in the heat. A lot of these bars are chocolate coated and have chocolate in them. A little bit of warmth, even a little bit of, you know, humidity, and they just become a giant mess. This particular flavor does not. Number That's number one. Number two, it is nutritionally balanced meaning that it keeps your hormone levels right where they should be. This isn't some of that paleo crap and all that. It is just the exact right breakdown of protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Number three, if you're in a survival situation where you may have elderly, you may have children, you may have people that are health compromised, it's soft. It's also something you can give this to a kid and it'll make their day. At these types of things, morale boost, um, being able to help those that are compromised are going to be critical. And once again, you rip open the thing, you eat it, a couple hundred calories, you know, and as far as the little tiny foil wrapper, easy, easily gotten rid of. No washing dishes, no reconstituting this, no giant buckets of dried that. Um, you don't have to worry about it getting contaminated with bugs like you will with the dehydrated stuff. And Dr. Barry Sears wrote a book called The Zone. Get that book and read why these are the best way to go in that type of a situation. In a stressful situation, you can put, you know, 200 of these things, they're not very big, in a little over-the-shoulder cooler. 
and you can be walking around with a month's worth of food. And yeah, you're going to, you know, it's not going to be like, you know, eating steak dinners every night, but it will definitely keep you from starving. It'll keep you level headed and it will be efficient. Add that to the ability to generate clean water. And you've got quite a few of your problems, your survival problems solved in a very simple, compact um, package. So we will leave it there. Um, but once again, in a situation like this, being mobile, critical and being efficient, even more critical. So like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And we will see you next time.